told you guys know that, that I say Sankara, not Sankara, or whatever you guys say. I can't remember. So, I'm wondering if, if my opinion would help you decide what how what you believe. Jones! Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, Indiana It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute, the podcast in which we get to the heart of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom one minute at a time. I'm Tom Taylor. I'm Pete Mummert. I'm Gerald Christopher Chubsy Ubsy. <laughs> and I'm Jamie, and I'm an archaeologist. Welcome back, Ooh. Jamie the archaeologist. Thank you. I forgot to wear my false mustache for this minute. Yeah, no, it's a dead giveaway. I know. You're looking lovely in your emerald green, though. That's it's, it's, it's making up for it. You're never going to find a cool hip band. It's true. Uh, but we are all here, seated at this big long dinner table for minute 43 of Temple of Doom, which begins with Indy probing Chatter Lol about some interesting events he's heard about connected to the palace and it ends with Indy sharing what the villagers told him about the palace becoming powerful again. And this is, we've had a lot of positivity here lately. I don't want to ruin that, but this is the minute, <laughs> the scene, this is the first part of this scene that creates the, the this, this scene is a microcosm of what's wrong with this movie because at the one end of the table, you've got this, Really interesting actual conversation going on between like two guys. I mean, we could debate like whether Indy's being a jerk about it or not. And maybe that even makes it more interesting. I don't know. But like <laughs> until like, you know, today almost like preparing for these minutes, I didn't know what they were talking about because every five seconds I'm getting distracted <laughs> by like, you know, snakes and bugs and all this nonsense. And I cannot literally cannot follow the conversation. And it drives me bananas. You don't like that little noise that happens when that food falls out of Short Round's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Boing! You know, actually, it's funny. What's interesting is my note on that was there was one other minute in Raiders where we had this sort of cartoonish sound effect, and it was when Marion sees the, uh, the knife in Belloc's tent, and there's uh -huh. that weird little cartoon oh. triangle that goes ding! <laughs> right. And this is exactly like that. He has like a, a, a safe and innocuous olive, I suppose, yeah. not a snake mm -hmm. or a, a monkey eyeball. <laughs> it falls out of his mouth and it goes, doing. <laughs> and it's just, it's Scooby-Doo. It's yeah, just more it Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Well, there's something I noticed in, right at the beginning of this that I'd never seen before, is that Willie is really doubling down on her, her perfume strategy. Like she oh, yeah, moves over and sniffs the yeah, like George next to her, and she starts putting the perfume on him. Oh, yes, Wait, yeah. is that what she's doing? Yeah. I thought she was like picking something off his. No, she's got the little perfume hey, bottle because like, she sniffs him, and then she's like, oh, and then she yeah. starts sprinkling oh, him, just like the elephant. Oh, yeah. I would <laughs> like. Obnoxious. I thought like she took a she took like a oh, hair yeah. from him. Oh, and she <laughs> like. I thought she, I thought like she liked. I couldn't tell if maybe she liked the way he smelled and was gonna. <laughs> Yeah, it was like trying to pick a jewel <laughs> off him or something, like his earring or something. Yeah. 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 No, but I see it. She's got the little, like, it's it's not a spray. It's, a, it's yeah, like she's like just dripping she's using the, the, yeah. the... It's like uh, uh, <laughs> Chanel oh number Chubbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chanel number um, thousand. But uh, I just want to say, Tom, I, I wanted to agree with you. It was one of the big notes I had for this minute. I literally never even heard this word thuggy. <laughs> until we started doing <laughs> right. this minute, one minute at a time, and discussing it. I had no idea what was going on with the Thuggy or the History or Pencop Palace or Blumber. It's a complete distraction, and it is a shame because, yeah. it, it, if A, it's one of the only parts or bits of archaeology in the movie, right? With any, histo yeah, yeah, any historical history, relevance, yeah, yeah. you know? And you you can't catch any of it. yeah. 
And it's kind of important to the plot too. Like this is the first it's time we've, we've gotten like, you, you know, vague things about darkness from yep. the palace. And, you know, we know the children have been taken and stuff. But this is the first time we've heard of the thuggy in this movie. And uh, it's kind of actually part of the plot. But instead the scene is about snakes and goop and, and it's too bad because they're they're like so interesting like i mean it's like the, they're like the mafia like they've got there's so many interesting things about them that if this scene had been a little more if you'd been able to stop and kind of think about it for a little more i think thuggy might be a lot more interesting thing to you know people learn about today yeah well no if you ask anyone on the streets remember radio like remember indiana jones and the temple of doom and everybody go oh snakes and monkey brains totally right. yeah yeah right and then a couple of like, oh yeah, kids in a mine car, and just no one <laughs> knows anything about the thuggy or what they're even doing or was it what the name of the palace is or I mean just any of it. Right. I think it's a really interesting script choice to offer that without like real expository dialogue. Like Indy's just saying these names like earlier he's yeah. like Clive and they're talking about the mutiny and they're talking about the thuggies and I. I don't know what the education of the American <laughs> film-going audience in 1984 was, but... <laughs> right. Oh, no, I think everyone... Oh, yes, Robert Clive, uh-huh. Right. Oh, right, Thuggy Cult, I remember that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. exactly. Well, Blumper kind of gets into it a little. He kind of gets some exposition in there about, like, oh, yeah, the Thuggy were a, you know... Mm-hmm. I forget what he says, like a blight or something, you know, in the... Yeah. the, the human sacrifices and stuff so you kind of get a quick idea of like what they're talking about yeah he called him an yeah. obscenity yeah an obscenity yeah. that's what he <laughs> an says obscenity. Yeah. and he also says the british army nicely did away with them mm-hmm. very self yeah. he's pretty proud of himself yeah yeah which isn't totally accurate but okay <laughs> but jamie you 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 do know quite a bit about the thuggy cult right basically they were depending on who you listen to the official story from the British, is that they were a group of people who were like an organized gang who would link up with travelers and promise protection to the travelers and then ultimately murder the travelers and take their things. Wow. And for the the British in India, this sort of came to be associated with the Hindu religion because there were a lot of other things going on in India that were related to the Hindu religion. Wow. Um, that the British were trying to crack down on, mm-hmm. like the practice of sati, which is like widow burning, it's called, um, and also things like female infanticide. The British considered those to be Hindu crimes. And so then it turned into like kind of persecuting the Hindu religion and trying to replace it with Christianity. And so anyway, that's sort of what the, all the thuggy cult is bound up with is who really is totally sure about what happened, and there's a lot of disagreement about what it was. But in the 1830s, the Thuggies were targeted by um, this guy in particular named William Henry Sleeman, who claimed to have wiped them out. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of went down a Thuggy rabbit hole, too. Hmm. Like, I, I think they're fascinating. Yeah. And, like, partially because they feel like the mafia. Like, it was hereditary, mm-hmm. and, like, you know, they were this secret group, and it was... But I thought it was interesting because I, I don't know if this is true or this is just something the British ascribed to them. But apparently mm-hmm. some thuggy members claimed that they were actually they didn't feel like they were doing evil. They felt like they were kind of propitiating Kali, like they were offering sacrifices right. of blood to Kali so that Kali wouldn't destroy the rest of humanity. And right. I thought that was interesting because, like, does that mean that people here in the Temple of Doom, like maybe they think they're doing good stuff? I mean, I think they do think they're doing good stuff in the Temple of Doom. It's their religion, right? Yeah. They go to the temple on Sundays. And... <laughs> right. But see, it's all just like a big miscommunication. <laughs> they're like, no, 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 guys. We have to rip <laughs> people's hearts out. Otherwise, bad stuff's going to happen. Yeah. Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> they're just sort of a, you know, an issue of values. Right. Oh, we get Pete. Did you uh, pick up on the same uh, Star Wars reference that I did in this minute? No, I didn't, and I feel horrible about that. Oh, I win. <laughs> um, 
they cut open uh, this is uh, they cut open the uh the snake surprise and it's uh exactly like tauntaun guts oh my god <laughs> it's exactly like uh han slicing open the tauntaun <laughs> and in a weird in a weird oh, way yeah. the, 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 when That's when they true. when that happens there's like a williams a john williams sort of fluty kind of trill like <laughs> kind of thing and i always hear that 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 same exact trill happens for some reason in the empire strikes back when luke is climbing back onto the thing after vader's knocked him out the window on uh-huh. Bespin. And that, that there's a little trill like that, and it always like, yeah. why is there an Indiana Jones sound in this movie? That's really weird. Because I think it happens in Raiders too, and I always associate it with that. And I'm like, that's really weird. Come on, uh, John Williams. Well, and I feel like our corpulent dinner guest is kind of he's kind of like a, he's like a dinner caller. Like he he yeah. introduces, yeah. you know, he, he's like, oh, it's Snake Surprise, yeah. <laughs> he's Johnny says what he sees. <laughs> Johnny says. Well, here's the thing I don't get, like. If he knows it's Snake Surprise, I mean, how many times is that going to work? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you call it Snake Surprise, you're like, well, I already know what it is. There's no surprise. I mean, we had this last yeah. week. They brought a big a big python out on the table. But one thing. Well, that's the, that's the guy behind the curtain. Like, he's just looking out, and he's the guy that says, is, is, is this going to be a surprise for these yeah. people? And it's thumbs up or thumbs down, so that when, like, this George guy sees him, he's like, he can say the name yeah. of that. We, I, I'm just legitimately <laughs> really pumped about these snakes. Yeah. Well, I had a question about the snake surprise specifically. Do you think that part of the recipe is it must be served with a pregnant snake? Oh, yeah. Like, what? does the snake need to be no, pregnant? No, 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 no. Because snakes lay eggs. Those are not the snake's babies. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> Listen, John <laughs> Brugan. John is yeah. shrieking. Yeah. It is. It is it, call us right, into a call tree. Us right now. I think just killed him. <laughs> we can talk about this, but I really do not think those are the snake's babies. No. Uh, and I don't even like, think they're snakes. I think yeah, they're Yeah, I think they're like eels or something. That's the whole thing. I was just kidding around. Surprise. <laughs> hey you got us again you did this two minutes ago so it's it's like a stuffed snake that's what i think yeah, yeah it's like a it's like a turducken it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah a snake ewan i i got a question about that though why is indy not freak out indy's a i was wondering that too world. but like there's one in, in last crusade or last crusade sorry he says something to elsa where he's like I'm a scientist. Nothing concerns me, or nothing shocks me. That's what it is. I'm a scientist. Nothing shocks me. That's... Except snakes. Except snakes. <laughs> right. Snake is dead. And he knows the little ones are eels. Yeah, maybe that. Oh, yeah, maybe he's like, oh, yeah. And these are, yeah, maybe that. Maybe that's the proof that they're not snakes. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I did just search this. Okay. Okay. Recently, <laughs> it has been confirmed that several species of snake are fully viviparous. Or viviparous, <laughs> such as the mm. boa constrictor <laughs> and green anaconda, <laughs> nourishing their young through a placenta, as well as a yolk sac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> Which is highly unusual among reptiles or anything Indeed. outside of the requiem of sharks. So apparently, because isn't um, viviparous is uh, uh, giving birth to live young, right? I think so. Yeah, so apparently a boa constrictor or green anaconda could be used. I mean, maybe that is the snake surprise. Like, everybody is sitting there, and they're like, well, you know, it's just that it's going to be snakes, and so there's probably going to be, like, a side dish of snake eggs. (laughs) Right. Well, is that a (laughs) viviparous snake? Surprise. Surprise. (laughs) (laughs) We do need John Brugan on this. John, we need you right now. Stop speculating. Yes. Hey guys, this is John Brugan. I'm calling in to set the record straight. The large snake that was served up is actually a large Burmese python. Um, it was, uh, that is a snake that is found close to that area in Indonesia and Thailand. There is an Indian rock python that would be similar looking that they may have been trying to recreate. Um, and they are actually egg layers, uh, so even though Jerry got the word viviparous correct, that in this case, the snake would be laying eggs and not having live young. And um, those were eels inside of it, uh, and 
there are some cultures where where they eat eels, and uh, that's that's kind of normal. I was in China where you could just you sat next to an aquarium, you could just pick the eel out you want. Most of the time, they smoked them or, or cooked them in some way for you instead of just serving them up raw. But uh, this was uh, when I first saw it. My reaction as a even a teenager was those aren't snakes, and they wouldn't have come out of there alive. But I, I think uh, they were just trying to serve up a disgusting meal of eels inside of the snake and that was the snake surprise uh but it's uh gross either way uh so i just setting you guys straight on that and uh happy to talk more animal stuff in the future just let me know all right jones i actually did look that up because i thought now there's something they do lay eggs but there's something weird about that i i always I always thought that the whole point of the of the movie was to show that they were slicing over open a pregnant snake and all the baby snakes were coming out. Because huh. because the snake looks to be whole. I never thought that. That's so yeah, interesting. No, really? So you thought it was a stuffed snake? Yeah, I always thought that. Yeah, I still think. But yeah, it but is. think I about it. So, so take it. But how would you how would you do it? How that's it? You don't see it? You like get a big funnel and just start pouring them in. Start cramming him down the and dude's mouth yeah rockin'? he's dead yeah yeah but i mean where then then it would be like the snake would look like the guy later in the scene you have a snake swallowing snakes yeah I mean, maybe they massage them you know into the body and not only that those baby snakes or eels or whatever uh, we'll have to get john's opinion but but they're they're alive i mean they couldn't live in a stuffed snake for that they long they're just doing that in the kitchen yeah yeah that's what the guy looking out the curtain was saying. He was like, is it time to stuff the snake? <laughs> is it time for the snakes? They can only live five minutes in that thing. <laughs> and then it lies flat because they're all kind of stunned. They don't have enough oxygen. And then when it opens up, they're yeah. like, oh, we got to slither out of here. Yeah. Yeah. You guys can't see me, but I did a slithering motion. <laughs> no, we saw. We My do. little cute ears felt it. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think the guy that's like downing two snakes at once is that good manners or is that bad manners i mean like he's just showing yeah. off if i went to someone's house you're like you're eating two turkey legs at the same time or you're like, <laughs> look i he's gonna do a I, keg stand in a minute that shot really upset me because <laughs> and it's not because of the snakes Wait, is that in this minute yes yeah oh yeah uh, yeah. Okay. yeah second 45 okay thanks is, he's doing these snake shots and <laughs> this is a very formal affair, you know, and everybody's mm. stand. Yeah, they're all standing, and then the Maharaja comes in, and he sits down, and then they sit down, and then the traditional music starts up. And here you have this guy, and he's, he's standing for no reason. We don't know where. It makes no sense. He's double-fisting snake shots. It's just, <laughs> you're like, this is just gratuitous, and it's not even, it doesn't make any sense at all. Like, even just the filming of it. Yeah. And he, yeah, he looks like he came right off the like a high school set of the Ten Commandments or something. <laughs> <laughs> like with his beard and his robe. Yeah. I know you guys are into weird conspiracies, but these disguises on these people are like, now I fully think they're all in disguise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there could be a movie about every one of these. <laughs> well, I thought, I mean, the only way my brain could wrap my head around this was like, you know, maybe he's a busboy in the kitchen. Because yeah. he's, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, out here? exactly. He's standing. Yeah. He's not at the table. He's not near the table. He's he, clearly you wouldn't do that. I mean, you'd be, you'd be yeah. insulting the Maharaja. Yeah. It's just that shot could be in the kitchen. Yeah, for all that's we know. What, he's just they're like, oh, they didn't. They, these didn't fit in the snakes. So I, I get to go nuts on all the leftovers. That's like that's like licking the spoon after you're making cookies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Indy's plate is empty. If you look at Yeah, I don't see him eat a he thing. They they've got food though cuz the the prime minister's eating stuff. Like Chatter Lal's eating stuff and it looks very yeah. delicate and not at all like what poor Willie and Short Round have. Maybe the eat. higher up the table you are, the better food you get. Like the nearer the It, might be. Oh, yeah. it seems like they keep bringing all the bizarre stuff to the far end of the table. Yeah. Yeah, like the snake surprise and everything. And Willie and, and Shorty, like they just look over with pleading they eyes, do. like they're just <laughs> yeah. in distress. And Indy, Indy pays absolutely no attention whatsoever. 
What can you blame him? But you know, <laughs> what can you... this guy's trying to have a conversation. <laughs> Stupid kid. It's kind of, you know, it's making me wonder, do we ever actually see him eat? Because he always comes up with this, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> you know, and then and then I can't remember yeah. if he eats in the village. I guess he does a little bit, but he does, his yeah. plate, he yeah, the there's apple. nothing on his plate here? He eats the apple later on. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, he eats. Oh, he does, he does yeah. Yeah. later. Yeah. That wasn't an apple, that yeah. was goat's... <laughs> You can cut that out. <laughs> no. Is this the whole movie's just this whole scene so silly? It's just silly. I'm sorry. Tommy yeah. set it off and it's just it's silly. silly. It's silly. It's the scene you remember. Right? Yeah, like Apple surprise. Movie, you think about this scene. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, surprise. but but you know, yeah, you don't remember like hooray. You remember like ah, come on, <laughs> yeah. But Spielberg, Spielberg said that this was one of his very favorite film scenes to film in his entire career, and no, he, he had him. so much fun. Is in the whole time he's like he's just like a little kid, and he's like, oh wait 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 wait, let's make monkey brains, let's make it even grosser, and he just tried to well, outdo himself with every single one. It's like complete kid gross out stuff right. and he just you know had what? somebody get that kid a train set or something He's, we're supposed to be watching a movie here look he made schindler's sake. list he made war horse like let's just let him have fun for a minute okay <laughs> he also made raiders of the lost ark crying out loud well the point i mean the point is he said it was his most favorite scene to film so i yeah. believe that it was yeah. fun to film yeah. it it yeah. doesn't mean it was yeah. good for the movie <laughs> and he also mm. is probably totally has a crush on Kate Capshaw and you know he's got a food thing too like there's you know he does food with close encounters and he, like he's yeah. got a thing with kind of gross did food did Steven Spielberg direct Hook or am I making that up no he, he d- did yeah he did cause there's the food fight yeah. scene in that movie mm. oh god <laughs> I just got sad and there's a bunch of kind of gross out food stuff in Goonies too Oh, in yeah. a Jurassic Park, the Chilean sea bass. Oh, yeah. No, sure. <laughs> and all the ice cream. Yep, all the ice cream. So this is the thread that binds all of Spielberg's movies together. <laughs> there yeah. you go. He's just hungry. He's just, poor yeah, guy's hungry. Guy's hungry. <laughs> well, speaking of hungry, did you guys uh, notice that uh, Bloombert is ostentatiously licking his fingers when he speaks about human sacrifice? And I was, yeah. yeah, I'm wondering, like, is that to show that it doesn't matter, you know, how much you hmm. garnish them up? The British are the true bloodlusting savages here. Yes, he's drinking the <laughs> yeah. blood red wine off his fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's getting yeah. kickbacks from the mining operation. Mm. Uh. Well, you may, well, yeah, I like that. I like that. I yeah, too. I like that. Because, I, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of imperialism and colonialism, right? Yeah. I mean, and that's why he shows up so late later on. Spoilers. <laughs> He's wetting his beak. <laughs> yeah, he shows up later on to get on the right side of history. Exactly. Like, he's yeah. like, oh, yeah, right. I guess I got to go deal with this. All right. At this time, he literally in, didn't yeah. know which side yeah. of the bridge he was going to pop out on. <laughs> <laughs> He also had a guy like down at the bottom of the river with a big net to catch anything that falls down before he shows yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rocks, human yeah. bodies, yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can I make a joke that we should have made in uh, 42? Sure. Minute 42? Go for it. Yeah. Uh, and this is a missed opportunity for the movie. I would have hated it, but I'm surprised they didn't do it. The Maharaja comes out, and oh my gosh, it's a kid. How come Willie didn't go, this, Mar- this Maharaja is a really small guy? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't believe they didn't do that. You're right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that would be. Well, like I thing. can like hear she her can't... voice saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but see, she's got she's got moments where she's actually genuinely very funny. I agree. Like when she, what yeah. she actually says in 42 is really funny. I actually yeah no it's true from this movie the most is when she says what's the surprise, and she says it in like a <laughs> horrified tone. Yeah. yeah. That line. See, that's the thing. That's one thing that one more revelation that I'm having from this movie is that Kate Capshaw is actually really, really good in this movie. She's a really good actress. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, she just plays a character that's not wholly likable. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But she does the best with it that she can. Bless her heart. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, she's 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 drawn poorly and is you know basically given one Sankara stone <laughs> to work with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really so, Kate Capshaw, if you're listening, seven two four lost Ark. <laughs> there you go. Uh, some good Ben Burt stuff here. I, the the sound, the squi- that kind of the squelchy, squishy oh, sound yeah. when it cut open the snake, and then the yeah. little like kind yeah. of mouse like sounds when the eels or baby snakes come out. Like just disgusting, but yeah, nice work. Yeah. By really him. Good. I mean, unfortunately, it was so good that we missed the plot of the movie. <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, yeah. In the short film about food, it's awesome. But, yeah. Spliced into Temple of Doom, yeah. it's kind of weird. Yeah. This is though, like this, like as much as people talk about how it hurt the film, this is one of the defining cinematic moments of the '80s. Mm-hmm. Like every kid remembers this yep. scene. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Eh, kids are stupid. <laughs> I was I was one of those yep. kids, and I was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> well, it ta- you know, we talk about how Steven Spielberg said he wanted the movie to feel like a roller coaster ride, and we bring that up every once in a uh-huh. while. And this is sort of part of that. It does mm-hmm. feel like yeah. a roller coaster ride, you know, through the gastrointestinal <laughs> whatever. <laughs> this, is the, this is the fifth corn dog after you get off the ride and then it all comes up. Well, can I can I tell a little story about this oh, yes. movie and myself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. of course. Um, so when I was a kid, my parents only owned two movies and it was this movie <laughs> and E.T. And um, <laughs> I was deathly terrified of E.T. because of the scene where he gets sick. Like, I thought that was the scariest uh-huh. oh, thing wow. ever put on to film. Oh, and so wow. I watched this movie over and over and over again, obsessively. <laughs> I had no idea there were other Indiana Jones movies. I, like, didn't know who Harrison Ford was. I didn't know anything. I just watched this movie all the time when I was, like, seven or eight years old. Oh, wow. And uh, I used to, I had dreams about, like, the heart-ripping out scene. And I finally told my mom that, like, just casually. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, I had a dream last night where a guy got his heart ripped out. And it wasn't like a scary dream. It was just a thing that happened in the dream. And my mom was like, have you been watching that movie? And I was like, what? <laughs> but so this was like the movie that I have watched the most in my entire life. And oh, it's wow. also been really interesting doing the minute thing because, you know, I had all I knew about this movie was like they were eating gross food and ripping people's hearts out and stuff. And there is actually mm-hmm. kind of a story right. under there. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a plot or hearts something and floods and crocodiles but well, the food scene totally worked for me it's interesting <laughs> that your parents only owned uh the two movies that featured uh spielberg's heart obsession it's true <laughs> true i don't know why they owned either of those movies my parents aren't big like movie people and i have a feeling someone gave them to them as gifts <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> So if you were to rank, like, especially having seen this for the most as a kid, yeah. like today, if you were to rank the Indiana Jones movies, how would you, how would you rank them? You guys aren't going to be pleased with what I have to say right now. Just so you know. This is a safe place. I <laughs> really like Last Crusade. Because I love, okay. I love the scene in Venice. It's one of my all-time favorite yeah. scenes in movies. Yeah. I like that, too. That's solid. Yeah. First and time then yeah, I, I would like put that. this There's one. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to put this one next. Okay. And then I'm going to put Raiders of the Lost Ark. But okay, the things are getting weird. I, yeah, what, this is. What? I was going to say it was the first time for everything, Jamie. Jerry, <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> well, you like Last Crusade, then Temple of Doom, and third is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, though honestly, you're not to like stroke your egos here, but the Minute Podcast made me appreciate Raiders a lot more. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's no. That's incredible. made me appreciate Belloc a lot more because I turned out that I love Belloc. <laughs> sure. See? Just wait till we get the Crystal Skull, though. You're gonna love your refrigerator. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly forgot about that movie. I, I like because everybody oh, yeah. we've asked to rank these movies, I don't think anyone's ranked Crystal no. Skull. I, no. I watched that's that weird. movie in a. I don't know if anyone remembers it. Yeah. I went to see it as an outing with my graduate school class, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow which was uh it was interesting we all left with kind oh, of like well. a nonplussed feeling <laughs> that's why that's why you're all archaeologists today exactly <laughs> <laughs> right. oh wow we have a big boop 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 boop, boop. this just in from Ooh, professor oh, oh. christy <laughs> porter actually this is brilliant this is good 
Why is Indy giving up the secret mission? He's clearly drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Does she be like, why is why is he like be, like betraying his cards? It's, like, it's he actually his cards? yes. It's really, 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 really strange that he keeps pushing this and he's talking about the thuggy. I mean, we can is he's supposed to go there and kind of suss it out, right? Do you think he really? Believes yeah, yeah. yeah. Thuggy cult story. I think he's a skeptic. It's just, it's a very, very strange thing. He's not there, I, what, four minutes? Or like, you know, That's one true. costume <laughs> yeah. change? And he's literally saying, hey, I think the palace is up to some bad yeah. crap. Yeah. But maybe maybe he's he's saying, oh, you guys stole these stones. They're going to be so mad about that. They won't even think that he knows about the kids. I mean, guys. Oh, maybe, yeah. He's an archaeologist, not a detective. Like, come on. I mean, it would, be like, it would be like if he walked into uh, if he walked into Tannis and he'd be like, "Hey, do you guys know uh, where this Lost Ark map room thing is? Like, do you guys? Yeah, is anybody don't tell here? Don't any Nazis. I was asking. Yeah, it's like, can I borrow a shovel or something? Is Belloc here? No reason. Yeah, is Belloc here? Yeah. The Nazis it's are like weird. openly very evil. That's what he's used to dealing with. Is openly very evil. So he's confused about this situation. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's a little strange. He's, he's, he's leaving himself open to uh, what may be lurking, and he's, no, he's, totally he's right. yeah. yeah, he's not very or judicious. Yeah. Christy, or... Christy is totally right. Christy's right. right Professor yeah. Christy. Oh yeah, right. That is. That is... She just knocked another one out of <laughs> yep. the park. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Quote unquote, Christy Porter, <laughs> Jer's sister. <laughs> Well, all right. Now that we've heard from Christy, we know the episode is over. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much for joining us again. This has been awesome. Thanks for having me again. It has been awesome. And uh, if you do <laughs> Last agreement. Crusade, I would love to do some Oh, totally, yeah. Things. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Of course. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll be in touch. Uh, and Pete, if people want to be in touch with us, what do they do about it? Um, well, why don't you come check out our website, indianajonesminute.com. And you can click on a link if you want to check out our T-shirts we've got, or you can just click on the link to contact us and send us an email if you want. That's an excellent idea, and I think you should all do that, and I think you should also come back tomorrow for Minute 44 of Temple of Doom here on the Indiana Jones Minute. What's the surprise? Surprise! <laughs> it's pregnant. It's pregnant. <laughs> Belloc just pops out of the snake and yells Jones. That's a surprise. Viviparous! <laughs> <laughs>